Hi everyone, thanks for watching Me and My Golf. We're your coaches, Piers and Andy, and welcome to the Ultimate Golfer. We recently had the opportunity to spend time with four of the best players in the world to help build the Ultimate Golfer. Yes, and each week we're gonna be sharing with you what makes them great. Now, week three is pitching, and you don't get to world number one without being able to pitch very well. So this week we're talking to Dustin Johnson to find out what makes him the ultimate pitcher. Yes, yeah, so make sure if you like the video, hit that like button, leave any comments down below, hit that subscribe button as well if you want to see more videos like this, including the rest of the ultimate golfer. Let's take charge of your game. So here we have it, Ultimate Golfer. DJ, thanks so much for joining us again. Oh yeah, thanks good for having me. Good to see me. you again, DJ. Yeah. Really good seeing you. It's been an amazing couple of days here, watching you with the other players, going through all the new equipment and that, but a little bit of competition going on the last few days as well. Long drives and things like that. Yeah, we've had a bit of fun. You know, TaylorMade, they do a great job, you know, especially introducing the new equipment and then also, you know, letting us have some fun with it. You know, we went out and played a few holes uh, yesterday morning with the new driver and, um, had some competitions. It, yeah, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, you and Rory going at it for, for sure. <laughs> we were going at it, yes, with the driver. Um, I, I I squeaked him out just barely with... Uh, it wasn't a very he, long drive though, was it, Pierce? 340 really? yards carry, by the way, or maybe 341. Rory hit, I hit one like 338, then Rory hit one 341, and then I hit another oh, one and hit it 344 in the air, so... Um, in the air, that was. Really yeah, in the air. The air. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. But it was fun. I mean, we had a bit of fun. We were actually on this hole right here. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Here. Absolutely. So, look, I mean, 2018, it, from our point of view, it looks like it's been a good season for you. Obviously, world number one. You know, there's lots of positives to go out of that. How has it been for you, though? Um, for me, yeah, it, it's been an okay season. Not as good as I would have liked to have played. I had three wins, a lot of top tens, but... A lot of those top tens, I felt like if, if I would have been in a, a little bit better form, could have been wins. And, you know, I, ha I was in position on Sunday, you know, quite a few times to win, and, and I didn't. So, you know, and it, it was just I didn't feel like my game was in the best form this year consistently. Okay. Yeah, at times it was good, but I just felt like across the board it was inconsistent, whether it was – my iron play was really good and I wasn't driving it that great or I was driving it good. My iron play wasn't as, as good as I would like. And, you know, you can always improve on short game and around the green. So, you know, that's something that I've worked hard on is, you know, becoming a better putter. I felt like I've spent a lot of time this year working on it and I'll continue this off season to really work on the putting to try to get, you know, to get better around the greens and then you know, continue to work on my wedge yeah. play. It's getting those components all working together is just how they come together at the right place. And we've seen you a couple of times now, looked at your driving, talked about that, looked at your approach play last year. But what we want to talk about, you don't get to world number one with an average short game. So we're no. going to test you out on some wedges today and pick your brains on, you know, some of the things that you do to judge distance and control distance. And we've got like 50 yards here and slightly further. And if we can just sort of see you hit shots yep. and get a feel of what you do and some thoughts, that'd be well, great. First, first and foremost, I would try to never leave myself with a 50-yard shot, just, okay. just because it's not, not the easiest shot. Obviously, I don't mind it. I'm, I'm fairly good at it, but I have numbers with my wedges that if I'm gonna lay up on a par five or, or, you know, even a short par four, if I can't get it all the way to the green, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at a number that I like. What is and, that number for you? Um, anywhere from 85 to 125. Okay. I like, uh, you know, I have number 85, 95, 105, 115, 125. So any of those numbers, I have an array of shots that I can hit that distance. And so that's what I'm going to try to leave myself is, is those numbers. And um, so a 50 yard shot obviously would be probably going into a par five and hit a terrible shot if yeah. I had 50 yards left from the fairway because I'm just whacking it down, advancing it down. I just wouldn't, yeah, I just wouldn't leave my, you know, 50 yards to a back flag, I wouldn't mind. 50 yards to a front flag, 
a little tougher, especially on the conditions that we play. For, you know, they're firm and fast greens. It's yeah. just hard to spin the ball enough to, to stop it. But I did put in this this year this high toe 64. So this shot's a little bit easier. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? The 64, a lot of people watching this would never think about using a 64, but we've seen you use this actually like la end of last year, beginning of this year, and yeah. it, using it really well. And it obviously well, gives you another option. For me, the reason I did add this 64, I, I'd messed around with maybe putting a 52 and a 56 in, but it, it just didn't work. I, I, too many numbers and they were so spaced together that, you know, I would, I just didn't like it. So I stuck with my normal wedge setup, which is 48 degree pitch wedge, 54 and 60. And then, you know, I always messed around with, do I carry a two iron? Do I carry a five wood? And I really never hit either one of them. So it didn't really matter which one I carried. And so then, you know, I started messing with a 64 and just took the two iron and five wood out of the equation. I carry driver, three wood, and uh, three iron. Okay. Because a lot of times if I'm hitting an iron off the tee, I want to make sure I hit it in the fairway anyways. And my best chance of doing that was with a three iron. So three I added- Still about 250 anyway, probably, yeah? As, yeah, I carry a three iron about 250. Yeah. So um, plenty far enough, go, goes where I needed to. Um, so then the 64 actually really helped me around the greens. And then if I do happen to have this 50 yard pitch shot um, I've gotten a lot better with it by having a 64 so just a lot easier I don't have to manipulate the face I kind of square square face hit a lot of these shots and mm -hmm. and really where it helped me was in the bunkers because yeah. I was always I was okay bunker player but the harder shots for me were like short-sided bunkers where just the way I play I don't like to you know in the position that I'm in I'm always a little bit handle forward yeah. and so in a bunker with a 64, I don't have to do anything different. I just hit it normal, the normal way I swing. and Extra loft helps you out, hit, I suppose. Yeah, and I can hit that short, spinny shot. Yeah, a lot less is, variables, I like it. Yeah, that makes yeah sense. so, and and for me, not having a two iron or five wood doesn't hurt me, because I I really never used them. I use this a lot more around the greens yeah. than I would a Much more important. Should we, should we get you hitting a couple to this yeah. 50? Yeah. And then we'll mix it up, go into some different numbers. Yeah, so right here, what I'm, I mean, I don't really practice 50 yards very often, so <laughs> it's more by feel, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then obviously most important hitting these kind of shots is strike and, you know, controlling your spin. Yeah. You know, that's what wedge play is all about is controlling your spin. And, you know, from here, I'm going to put, put a pretty good amount of spin on it. So I'm going to fly it, you know, try to fly it right to the hole. Okay. just short of it and it's interesting when, when we've seen you hit this shot as go well on. we've got 64 degrees aloft people think this is just going to go straight up in the air no. it actually comes out quite low with plenty of grab on it doesn't uh, it yeah low low spinner which is easier to control the spin yeah. and e easier to control what it's going to do on the green so yeah i'm going to hit this shot per fairly low it's good and it's going to have a lot of spin so yeah very good i'm going to try to fly it right to the hole which those are just a hair short. But. Yeah, 48 on the last one, so that was not so bad. It's interesting, the one, the one thing that we love about your technique, uh, DJ, is that when you're hitting the shot, we can see this head rotation through the golf ball, and that just allows you to turn your body through, whether it's a conscious thought or not. You know, for amateur golfers watching this who get stuck over the ball and don't get any turn through the ball, you're brilliant at turning through because of that head rotation. Right, so, and especially for me with my wedges i do it more with wedges than, mm -hmm. than yeah. anything else in the bag but yeah it's helped yeah with with the wedge obviously rotating through the ball so i don't get stuck here and hit them left yeah. and you mentioned strike that's a key component to be able to get that consistent strike on the golf ball and, and you'll distance. see when when dj does this how much that head rotates early could be in and what i like about this as well there's not massive divots taken out the ground here sort of just brushing the ground which enables well, you to get that nice strike on the low face. Well, and two, if you can consist, you know, if you're taking too big of a divot on this shot, it's going to be really hard to control the control the distance because you're going to constantly you're going to be de lofting it too much. Um, and if you watch any really good pitchers and around the greens, they really don't take a divot. Yeah, you know, it's you know they just kind of brush kind of bruise the grass you know maybe take a little bit of a divot but not yeah. much unless that, you're trying to hit some kind of 
fancy shot. Yeah, and that just helps with the consistency, especially for amateurs. If that helps you, gives you a margin for error. We talked about it a lot, Pierce. Just letting the sole of the club work across the ground. Well, if you use the bounce correct, correctly, you're not going to take a big dip. Perfect. So that's to the 50 yarder. You've still got the 64 here. How would you regulate distance if we said we wanted you to play one to the the back flag here, 71 yards to the back flag? So 71 with with my 64, I just call it. A, it's going to be about a half a half shot for me. So. Um, I just kind of take it back to, to what I think is about halfway, which would be about there, and then just hit it kind of normal. Again, that head rotation was very evident. And this is right on the margin of where you are probably wanting to hit it more often. 71 yards, you pitched that one. So that straightaway is obviously more comfortable. You can see that well, you hit that shot more. I know exactly, I know from practice, I know how like with a 64, my half one goes about 70 yards, so. We were in pitching wedge of nine irons last year and you were calling the number. I think three out of seven you got right yeah. to the yard. So yeah. you, know, you know what you're doing with the yardages for sure. Well, no, and so that's why for me, I'm not gonna leave myself with a 50 yard shot just because it's not something that, you know, it's hard to get a, a swing that, that goes 50 yards every time for me. Yeah, I suppose you're some not collaborating guys, that, are you? Yeah, some guys that. like it, but you know, I don't. You it know, makes some sense. guys want to sense. get as close to the green as possible. Yeah. yeah. Where I've learned through the years and with a lot of practice with TrackMan, that for me it's easier to hit it, you know, on numbers that I already have. So, yeah. like obviously, if I was 10 or 15 yards closer, much easier shot. But yeah. it's for some reason not like 50, 60 yard mm -hmm. shot is not something that I'm ever going to leave myself, unless, I, like I was saying, a back flag. It's easier. Yeah, you can run it in a little bit more, a little bit flatter. Well, yeah, so, you just have a lot more options of what to do or how to play the shot. You can yeah. pitch and roll it. You can fly okay. it back there. You can, you know. Yeah. And what, what about if you had 80 yards, for instance? So just in this instance here, you had 80 yards. So you said halfway back. How do you then change the distance? I'm just going to swing it back just a hair further. There we go. So no real difference in how much no. you effort you put in. No. It's all about the swing length. That kind of just dictates how far. I want it to go, so the speed, everything's going to be similar. Yeah, it's gone I need past. to clean the face. So. <laughs> we got a towel here? We can get a towel. It was just because it rode up the face. It would have gone 80. Okay, it been. Without, without the air, we go. <laughs> and this, look, this is so important, Well, I think it? another thing uh, important is you see, like I'll see amateurs and stuff, they'll, they'll be chipping and, I mean, you look at their club and it's got like dirt from six weeks ago on it. Yeah. Like you can't, you just can't. I don't and they're asking, anything. how can I get more spin? <laughs> yeah, how can I get well, more spin? Take a look at your clip that, base. But you're just not going to get a consistent, consistent flight on the ball. Cause yeah. so like I'll hit one, probably max one shot or, you know, maybe two and then I'll clean it. The yeah. two would be the most I'd hit before I clean my wedge off. Yeah. Just because if I'm on the golf course, I'm never going to hit with a dirty club. Yeah. So why would I ever practice with one? So, yeah. you know, if you're in a bunker or something, you don't, you know, it's, I'm not going to clean it every shot just because it doesn't really matter in a sand trap. But when I'm pitching out of the fairway, I'm going to clean it every time just yeah. so I, I get the, the same reaction. It's important, isn't it? You understand exactly what's yeah. going on. So Absolutely. Let's hit one more. Let's go um, front flag again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sort of, we've got three balls left, Pierce, after yeah. this one. And we'll go through a little bit of a, uh, a challenge. We're going back flag. <laughs> he changed his mind there. I like that. I like that. So, <laughs> so you do a lot of sort of practice to numbers. What, what we'd like to do is sort of challenge you here, DJ. And we'd like to randomize it. Pierce is going to call a number out. We we'll want to see if you can carry to that number. And then we'll do three random numbers and see how close we can get. Okay. 81. 81. 81. Okay. 81. Zipping back towards that hole. Might be a little short on that. 78. 77. 77. Okay. Andy, you'll Not go. Bad. Okay, I'm going to go 63. Yep. 63. 63 yards. Again, that head is brilliant. So anyone watching this, you know, we're talking about cleaning the face, we're talking about getting the strike right, we're talking about getting that head rotating as well. That's probably for sure. 65. 
65 and a half. <laughs> okay, uh, one more, let's go. I know how far I hit it. As far as hitting it, uh, the number you're saying is not easy. Cause, okay, okay. I'll tell you what, you hit one. You hit one what? to your number. You tell us a number. No, 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 I'm just saying I can tell you how far I hit it when I yeah. All right. Yeah. hit okay. the shot. Last one then. Let's go 59, let's go 59. 59. Tricky one. Yeah. Oh, that's too far. A bit too far? I, I call it thin. A little, little clean. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Oh, but it was, one. I'm going to give you the total on that one because it could come back a little bit. No, it was, a, it was too far. Yeah, pitch 64, but it yeah. got it got 61. So it came back a bit. It's, it only a, it's only a six foot. It's only a six foot. I think there's some key things there as well. You know, interestingly enough, straight away you said, I don't leave myself this number. And I think for the guys at home Huge. watching this, don't put yourself in a situation that you're not comfortable with. Find that number that you like to you like to hit from but you need to actually find out that number for, first by practicing it and obviously what you do DJ there is you sort of have an awareness of where your number is based on the length of your swing and I think that's right. key to do. Yeah. No I mean that's and that's been the biggest improvement in my wedge play is yeah is when I am you know when I'm going into a par five if I can't reach it you know leaving my trying to hit myself to a specific number that I know if I have that number I'm going to hit it close. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to give myself a really good birdie chance. And, you know, it, it works for me, through, you know, kind of throughout the bag, like especially, if, you know, up to, you know, say 145 yards. If I'm inside 145, I feel like I'm always going to give myself a good a birdie good chance. Opportunity. Yeah. Just because I practice that distance a yeah. lot, you know, anything inside that. Um, you know, anywhere from 85 to 145, I practice a ton. And that's just been... You know, because I have a lot of those shots, so that's where I've really improved, and that's how I've gotten myself to the best player in the world. And that's and that's and with with DJ's drive as well, carrying it 340. You know, you're going to have a lot of those shots. 344, Pierce. Sorry, 344. 344. We're going to have those shots even into par fives. Yeah. You know, second shots. Well, <laughs> I probably won't carry any ball on tour 344 unless it's straight downwind in Hawaii. It there might. you go. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that's obviously I'm swinging very hard and. That's another reason why, you know, we were talking about fitness earlier. I'm in the gym is so I don't have to swing hard, but I can still, you know, hit it a long way. You know, 95% of the drives I hit, I'm swinging anywhere from, you know, 85% or less. You know, there's very rarely am I swinging, you know, above 85%. Yeah, there's plenty left in the tank, as we saw exactly. yesterday. Yeah, but just a bit of competition. Back. That's all it was, you know Pierce. Him it's against Rory, that's all he needed. Couldn't let Rory win. Couldn't Rory DJ, Couldn't thanks ever so much for your time. Yeah, really good. It. Thank you. Thank really you. We actually it. have got a uh, giveaway as well. So we're going to give away three of DJ's golf balls. Sorry, three dozen of DJ's golf balls. So he probably doesn't know we're stealing off him just yet. Um, so where did DJ actually win his US Open? So post down below, let us know the golf course, and you could win those golf balls. Yes, and also hit the thumbs up if you want to see more guests like DJ. Subscribe to the channel if you're a new follower or viewer. And also, don't forget to check out our Me and My Golf Weekly, where we're going to analyze DJ's long drives. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed that. We absolutely love doing that. And now make sure you don't miss out. Click on the previous video to see last week's Ultimate Golfer. Yes, now if you're somebody who's looking to break 90, then we have the perfect solution. We've created a six week coaching plan where myself and Pierce personally guide you week by week to help you break 90. Now to go and check out part one or week one, should I say, click the link in the corner and we will see you over there.